All right, we're back here on Is It Prophecy on Israel National Radio. And again, the show is syndicated as the Messiah Hour on YouTube. Go to YouTube and type in Messiah Hour with Ari Lewis and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It is free to do so. You can check out previous episodes with Rabbi Yosef Misrahi, Rabbi Laser Brody, Dr. Joe Schroeder, much, much more. And again, you can find this program on JAP. Uh, you can download JAP from iTunes or Google Play Stores or from the website www.j app.me. We're continuing the conversation with Rabbi Yitzhak Ronaldstein. And, uh, Rabbi, I wanted to bring up something that you mentioned uh, earlier in the first half of this program. When I said it was the, the York side of Rob Cook, you said it's the anniversary. Can you explain a little more and elaborate on that? Well, it's 80 years. We're starting, you know, it's, he passed away. He, everything in Rob Cook's life took place in Elul. He was born in the 16th of Elul. He came to Jerusalem to be the rabbi of, of Yerushalayim and created the chief rabbinate of Israel in the 3rd of Elul, 1919, and then exactly 16 years later, in the 3rd of Elul, 1935, he passed away. 1935, it's now uh, 2015, 80 years ago. So we're marking the 80th year, and it's the beginning of a process leading up to marking his actual day of your site, the 3rd of Elul which will take place in the end of the summer coming oh, okay. up. Okay, and uh, tell us a bit about the event. Uh, this show right now is airing Tuesday, January 27th, 5 p.m. Israel time. So an event just a few hours from now is going to happen, uh, commemorating the anniversary of Rav Cook. So, so tell us about this event. Well, a, a number of years ago I got involved with the poetry of Rav Cook and presenting it musically. And I, in Toronto, I saw a band uh, with Greg Wall and Shai Bachar called the Later Prophets, and they were presenting the, uh, the, 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 the visions of Ezekiel in jazz form based on the trope. Uh, the concert in Toronto I, I was extraordinary. I felt like I was watching John Coltrane and Herbie Hancock playing together. And afterwards, I came up to, to Greg Wall, who was now a rabbi, and at that time was a religious Jew, who, um, and said to him, I'm really looking for the music in Ruff Cook's poetry. Can you help me? And he said, sure. What are you talking about? And I explained to him, and I showed him some of the poems, and we've been on a journey ever since of, 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 of presenting them musically. We've done it in the United States. We've had a few tours of Israel, and he's coming to Israel um, this week. And so we're able to present this great evening in a few hours at Mike's place. And it's an evening to celebrating uh, Ruff Cook's 80 years since Ruff Cook's soul went to Shemaim. And uh, we'll be presenting a, a show of Ruff Cook's poetry and some of his melodies. And then following us, to cap off the, the, to continue the celebration, the Solomon Brothers from the from Moshe of Modi'in, Reb Shlomo Karlbach Zatzal, his Moshev, they're going to be doing a tribute to Reb Shlomo Karlbach. And we'll all be singing and dancing along with them. So it's a, it's a wonderful evening at Mike's place tonight at 8 o'clock. And please invite everybody. It's free. And if you come with with uh, more than two people, it's you can get 50% off as an additional incentive, but it's generally free. So that's what we're doing, and it's a we're inviting everybody to join us. So tell tell us the idea about doing it at Mike's place. Is that something that Rob Cook maybe uh, would have smiled on? Because Mike's place is um, not necessarily particularly religious, but it's it's you know very culture part of Israel. I mean the Anglo community. It's a place of fun. So is that one of the reasons why you chose Mike place, Mike's place? Uh, uh, for sure, well, it's kosher, and a lot oh, yeah. of the people go there. Are the you know the American yeshiva. Uh, community. Right. Uh, community. What I meant was, it was it's, it's not a dissent. Yeah, but it's really, Rav whole teaching is about Lehit uh, Chadesh Hayashan Lehit Kadesh Hachadash. It's one of his most famous sayings, to renew the old and sanctify the new, and really bringing uh, his extraordinary uh, spirit and light into a setting like that is a fusion of the old and the new. Right. What I meant was that it's interesting that this is not taking place in the synagogue, like you would see a lot of you know different rabbis would be somewhere in this way. That it was it was there a particular reason not to choose a synagogue. 
Well, it's rough that the, the teachings of Rough Cook need to come to the entire world, and this is a, a, a wonderful place to do it. All right, now tell us how you got in contact and met with Rabbi Greg Page, and later on at the end of this segment, we're going to play two of his uh, music, if you will. We'll talk about that in a few minutes, but tell us a bit about how you met uh, Rabbi Greg Page. Well, Rabbi Greg Wall was, um, was doing this concert in Toronto, and I approached him, and we began a process where I said to him, I'm really looking for the music and this poetry. You want to help me? And we've been doing it ever since. And he's an extraordinary musician, and so is Shai Bahar, the piano player, and Ilan Kachka on drums. And we're having a, a, a Shani uh, Shavit playing a bass. And these are all, you know, top-notch New York and Israeli jazz musicians. And, and they, you know, they play on a level of excellence that Rough Cook deserves. All right, again, this is Is It Prophecy on Israel National Radio, Ruth Sheva, and the show is syndicated as a Messiah Hour on YouTube. Go to YouTube and type in Messiah Hour with Ari Lewis and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, before we talk about the music that's coming up, I want to talk about this, uh, that you're a Gabbai, the big Knesset, and uh, you were telling me off-air it was the first time in 30 years there's going to be this Minion, so tell us more about it. Well, the Minion has been going on since Elul this year. We started on Rough Cook's short site. Mozi Yotzeb, we've been davening there every Friday since. We're soon going to be davening as well Shabbat morning. But we really invite everybody to come and join us, uh, you know, 20 minutes after Shkiev, after um, the candle lighting, and we, we daven. And, and Rip Shlomo Karlebach came and davened there in 1960. He came to participate in a simcha, and Rav Tzvi Yehuda Zatzal, Rav Cook's son, invited him to Davin, and he Davin Musaf at that very same place. And then, in 1962, the yeshiva left to go to Kiryat Moshe, and it's been underpopulated ever since, and, and there hasn't been regular community tefillah for, for over 30 years. And so we're, we're blessed with the opportunity to, to Davin there. So I really want to invite everybody to help us uh, really make a, a wonderful minyan. It's a tremendous place to Davin, because of the Kedusha that was infused by Rav Cook and the circle of students. The people that were around Rav Cook were the most extraordinary lights of Jerusalem at that time. The, the Tzaddik of Jerusalem, Aryeh Levine, uh, Rav Cook's Talmud Mufak, the Rav Hanazir, David Cohen Zatzal, of course, Rav Cook's son. So what, the, the, what took place in that house from 1923 on it's really the revolution in modern Jewish spiritual history took place there. And if people want to get involved with that men and support it, uh, go to it, support a different way, what's the best way they can do that? Uh, well, Facebook, and also we do need some supporters. It's just starting out, and there are some expenses that we need to do in order to be really able to do it well, and we really do need help with that. It's also a very humble uh, place with, with limited financing, so if people want to participate, it's a great mitzvah. To, to revive such a place of holiness. And speaking of mitzvah, I want to go back to um, Rav Cook's teachings. I'm curious if he ever commented on this aspect, but there is an idea that uh, the mitzvot outside of Israel, they're like practice or derabanan, <laughs> and I know that's not the majority opinion, but I want to know if Rav Cook ever talked about that teaching. Um, I'd have to I'd have to research that a little bit further to say if it, but that specifically, because that's sort of radical to say that it's only practice right. outside of Chutzarts. But there's no question that the fullest expression of it is in the land of Israel. We even see that in his own writings and as what he wrote when he was in Europe and then what he started to write when he came to Israel in 1904. There was a certain illumination and expansion of being that, that occurred, and we can see it through his writings and continued. So if, uh, it may not be that, you know, it's, it's just practice in Chutzarts, but for the fullest experience of the Torah, that, that occurs in Eretz Israel, where the channels have been opened for thousands of years, and we're reopening those channels. So there's no comparison. Learning Torah and following in the actual footsteps were Avram and Sarah and, and, and Yitzchak and everybody actually walked and opened the gates and where, you know, the Beit HaMikdash was and, and, and all that. So 
Rav Kook was certainly the Kohen Gadol of the return to Israel and to the uh, expansion of the Torah that that represents. Now, I want to also go back to uh, what I said in the first half of this program. Rav Kook was considered... Uh, in the minority, when he was telling everyone to come to Israel, again, this was before the show when he was saying this, and most people did not listen to him. Most rabbis didn't think like him or listen to him. Why do you think that was? Why, why was it they, they didn't listen to him, and why was he in the minority? Well, there was a certain <clears throat> independence of thought that he displayed. So when he came to be the rabbi in Yafo, and, and began actually the Shemitah, the Heter Shemitah, and, or reinstituted it. And in other things, he, he showed a certain independence from the, the rabbis of the old world. And, uh, and then it was even, that was emphasized when he came back to be the chief rabbi of Jerusalem and then created the chief rabbinate of Israel. He was really creating and stepping forth and creating, in a sense, a new paradigm and a new relationship between the Torah of Israel and the land of Israel and the people of Israel. Most of the other rabbis at that time were were mostly in the old paradigm of, you know, the, the type of Judaism as it was practiced in Chutzlaretz. And they didn't really have the vision and the depth of Torah to, to navigate the, the return of, the, of Torah to the land of Israel. And so he was really paving this path, and it was not a path that many people um, were prepared to take or, or felt they just weren't on the level. So that's partially why he was such an extraordinary gift, Mina Shemaim, that he was on that level and was able to direct us with such clarity and vision. And considering how big a rabbi Rob Cook was, the influence, his writings, is there a rabbi nowadays that somewhat is comparable, that someone is taking the torch, if you will, to be the, the Zionist rabbi of the Jewish people? No. Uh, it's Rav Cook's teachings were very much about that each person's light has to shine forth brightly, and and he was really his light was encouraging each individual to take responsibility to be their greatest being and their greatest light, and not to rely on look for somebody outside of you to 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 direct you and to guide you. Each one of us is in a uh, part of the return to Israel and Rav Cook's teachings as the Torah is a return to prophecy which means a personal relationship to God and the capacity to, for each person to communicate with God and, and live out of that communication. So it's unlikely that because of a lot of reasons that we'll ever have a Gadol on his level, but he meant for his Torah to be, in a sense, the, the Torah that brings us into, into Tkufat HaMashiach. Mm. Okay, this is, is a prophecy on Israel National Radio Ruth Sheva, and the show is syndicated as Messiah Hour on YouTube. Go to YouTube and type in Messiah Hour with Ari Lewis. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're speaking this afternoon with Rabbi Yitzchak Marmelstein, and I understand uh, at the end of this program we're going to play some music from Rabbi Greg Walls, and I know it has to deal with the teachings of Rob Cook, so please tell us about that. All right, well, we'll be playing two pieces. One is an instrumental piece. Um, Nigun Havrav Kuk that he composed spontaneously when he found out about the the massacres in Hebron and started uh, started uh, crying out for for God to to bring forth justice and um, the other one is a translation into English of a Hebrew poem that he wrote Hatzofel Tova the one who seeks the good. And since we're not going to be playing the Hebrew, I'll just do a few lines in the Hebrew so you can hear how beautiful it is. Sure. He says, um, he wants, Hatov hamuchlat beli dai be'en keitz u'meitzar u'gvul she'enenu nizdal mikol chai she'machshir bechasdo kol pasul absolute good without limitation, without end, constriction, or boundary. Good that does not separate from anyone alive and with its love fixes everything broken. It's even more radical in Hebrew that it's with its chesed makes kosher everything pasul. Shemachshir bechasto kol pasul. Tov netzach, tov l'sha'a, tov l'chol am ve'am. 
ואור וחדווה באשר הוא שם. Good forever, good right now, good for every people and nation, for all who seek for the good and not for the bad, and the light and the delight as the God's presence is there. באשר הוא שם. All right, so we're going to play that in about uh, two or three minutes or so, uh, those two pieces from Rabbi Greg Walls. And since we're going to conclude the program with those two pieces, uh, again, a reminder that you can find me on JAP, the Jewish application that has Shireen, as well as episodes of this program. And you can download JAP from iTunes or Google Play stores or from the website www.j-app.me. And again, messiahourgmail.com if you have any questions, comments, concerns, any show topics you want me to talk about in the future, anyone you want me to interview in the future, write to me, and we're going to try to make that happen. And again, my guest this afternoon has been Rabbi Yitzhak Marlstein. It's at 8 o'clock at Mike's Place, right, Rabbi? That's right, 33 Yafo Street, and please invite everybody to come and come with all your friends. It will be a tremendous celebration. All right, entrance is free, so you can go there and have a good time and enjoy uh, some of the teachings of Rob Cook and enjoy the festive evening. Uh, thank you, Rabbi, so much for being on the program, and we're going to play Thanks those. So much. Yes, of course, and we're going to play those two pieces from Rabbi Greg Walls. Again, this is is a prophecy on. Right, the name of the band is Rabbi Greg Walls' Later Prophets, with Shai Bahar featured on 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 the piano. Okay, fantastic. So we're going to play that coming up. Again, this is Is a Prophecy on IsraelNationalRadio.com.
It's the good that I desire. Her broad expanses entrance me. Her lips, her roses I kiss. Her glorious vision exalts me. Absolute good, without limitation, without end, constriction, or boundary, that does not separate from anyone alive. Good for me and for all. Good without bad or tightness. Good full of pleasure for all. Full of tranquility, without anxiety. Good forever, good right now. Good for every people and nation. For all who seek for the good and not for the bad, and the light. And the delight, as the one, is there. Good for every people and nation.